on my check one two one two two legit city on the mic yo what's going on everybody how y'all doing today two legit city today we're back guys back into the odies very sorry about the internet problems as i have uh, no way of controlling that there we go we got the mamba in the view he snapped it. He's kind of mad. I moved some of the sheets around him. <laughs> He'll be okay, though. Ms. Chemical Stairs, I see you over there. How are you? How have you been? Hope all is good and you're a part of the world. And let's go. Thank you so much for the 33 months as well, Miss Chemical Stairs. Welcome back to the City Council. Enjoy the emote, T20 Dice Ad Free Viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. But thank you so much, Miss Chemical Stairs. It's been a long time. It's been a good 33 months. And you roll the four. Feels bad. <laughs> Never lucky sometimes. <clears throat> Classic. All right, all right. So, the day in the Onis, we need lumber because I need more ethanol, and ethanol is going to be the only way for me to do my cooling loop for the uh, sleet wheat. So, we're going to need to make some. But of course, the problem is, is that we don't have enough uh, lumber. Now it looks like we do now. So I think we'll do a sweep order right now. Bam. All right. So they're going to sweep all the lumber and it's going to go into here. Now it should go to either or of these, which should be good. We're back down to 79, which is not bad. We're not at 80 anymore, which is pretty good. And we have our industrial brick ready. So this is somewhat okay. We are going to be running some things on it though. After that, just cleaning up a little bit of the gases. I don't need rust anymore. We'll take the sandstone. And we no longer have the entrance opened up, which is fine. This is handling it. All right. So... Firstly, we need to make some space over here. So this is normal. We're going to basically extend this out. I'll probably have to uh, redo some of the other things. Like I'm probably going to want this to go up. I'm probably going to need a better ladder set up on this side. Which has to go all the way down as well. I'm also thinking maybe I should have extended the arbitrary farm a little bit outside. Nah, we'll have to leave it like this. And we should be okay up to this floor. This should be solid. I should have to replace that. Should be good, should be good. I should ladder up this way as well. All right, so another thing I wanted to do was bop the deodorizers right here. Now, I don't want to uh, bop this one, so we're just going to have to remove these. First things first, deconstruct the sublimination station. Should be fine. And then I'm also thinking about moving the rusty oxidizers. I think we should move those. So we're going to do some move arounds today. We'll probably eventually get to the, uh, because we got to this planet, right? With a rocket platform? Yeah. We'll probably have to go back to, uh, get some enriched uranium. Oh, all the bees are dead. Feels bad. All right. So the CO2 should be all right. I might be wanting to move some more gases up there. Thinking about it. And then once we seal this up, I need to open this out. 
it kind of sucks, but I need to do it. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no way around it. I just need to set this up. So the problem is, is that there's a good chance it gets too cold and there's nothing we're going to be able to do about saving the trees. So I may need to put a heat source here. Now looking at this, we don't have anything that's actually that hot. Feels bad, man. The uh, pea dirt is barely anything. Removing the salt water here is not that bad as well. Wait, this line is leaving. Oh, this is yielding when it shouldn't be. Because of how it's pea water, it's it's actually taking priority. Feels bad. Because it's only moving uh, 500 grams per second. I gotta cut that. So that this water could go through, and then once this goes through, it should have priority. There we go. So it's, it should be water from there on out. Alright, so with that... Placing some ladders, moving some things. We're going to have to extend this out. We'll take care of that after I start setting this up. So we need something heat. We need something that generates a little bit of heat. It's probably worthwhile for me to just build something like a space heater. Utility. See, the Tepidizer is not bad. It's a good amount of power, though. This is only 120 watts. Alright, so let me put this here. What a simple signal switch. I shouldn't use this, but might as well. Miss Chemical Stairs, how have you been? You might be busy today. It is Thursday. Actually, you still probably are at work. <laughs> I'll let you be. Uh, hope you're doing okay, though. I haven't seen or talked to you in forever. So, yeah. I just don't know. I feel like I've lost touch with you, though, to be honest. I, I feel like I, I don't know what to ask you anymore. Because it's been so long. Oh yeah, work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take care of business. Take care of business. Alright, so... We gotta build that. Build that. And then we're gonna put the heater there. Just in case it gets too cold, we can heat it back up. And then I need to start fighting the cold energy. So I'll probably have to mine everything out, which makes a lot of sense. So I should probably start that now. I can't reach that, but I could reach all of that. So I'll have to mine that. And then we'll mine that. Alright, so we gotta remove this, that, and this. That ladder gets removed, and we're gonna remove these ladders so that we can have this right here. This should go all the way down, and I think this doesn't need to be cold anymore. So it should be fine. I do have to remove this, right? So there's nothing I could do about that. So, I think that means we cut the line, and we allow it to just leave. Because we're going to remove the pipeline for that. And then I should be able to just do this. Plus the automation and shutoff valve, and I don't need the power there anymore. Cool, cool. Power is not connected, but we should. And then now, 
We gotta mine this out. So looking at this, there's no wall. This area is gets, it's getting a little bit warm, so I should probably do something about that. It's far away from uh, everything else, though, so I don't think I need to worry. But you know, we'll keep we'll keep eyes on it. I'm also thinking I might want to get into this ice biome. It's kind of in the way, and it's already melting. There's a lot of open space already. AETNs are inside, so might as well. That's what I'm thinking. Also, all the CO2 at the bottom. Kind of a pain, kind of a pain. I should go all the way down with that since it is open. I hope no one gets stuck. Alright, the automation needs to get removed. And then I need a new spot for the pea dirt. Oh god. dirt is fun. Uh, I wonder where I could put that. We have an artifact that we'd grab, so it's not anything we need to really worry about. Oh, it's back to pipe. That's actually good. We're just not generating enough oxygen, though. Feels bad. Oh, there's P. Ah, floating P oxygen. That's never the business. I gotta take care of that when I can. Where is that coming from? Why is there P dirt over here? No one's sick. Feels weird, man. Uh, is anyone on the other planets? No. Okay. And there's no one collecting databanks. Okay. So we'll do that now. Databank guy. He should be okay. Alright. So that's there for the pipeline. This is for slime. So what can I do with the polluted dirt? Not much, to be honest. So I guess I need to build something for that now. Alright, there's a little bit of heat. Once this gets mined out though, the cold energy is going to come out. Nah, I should keep it on. Alright, so one thing I was thinking about is making a Paku farm. So, naturally, we're going to have a little bit of space here. Might as well take the full nine. For the the spread. That leaves <clears throat> that leaves this area for the uh, crossing. So I should probably put some tiles on there. To be honest, you know what? I'll do this as well. Put the uh, lowered layer and then put a solid layer on top so that we get the run speed. It's a very minor thing, but I think it's nice. So we'll have to go for it. All right, all right. Now we have... We have a lot of pee water. We really do. And I feel like I should try to do something with it. So I don't want to deal anything with that pee water. There's a little bit of heat right there. There is a lot of pee water here, but it's minus 15. This is minus 10, minus seven. Uh, honestly, there's there's no area that I could really use that for cooling. So I want to take the pee water and I want to filter it and drop it back out of here, <laughs> which is probably going to have to be the play. All right, so sieve. We'll just do it like that, so we can do a simple setup. Alright, so... We'll have that pitcher pump. Double bottle emptier, and then we need a little bit of power. Which, honestly... 
Hopefully, I could just pull it off of that. And then we need a little bit of sand, which I actually don't have a lot of. Alright, so we should be making ceramic, not a nine, because we have a lot of clay. Crushing the ceramic to sand is always fun. Uh, five times four. So that's what? Four times... Five times four is 20. Times that by four, it's 80. So it's four times four, that's 16. Okay. I should crush some uh, salt in the sand. I have way too much granite though, to be honest. I'm gonna do that as well. We're not making any more glass due to the fact that I don't have a lot of sand. Feels bad, man. No regolith for the lose. Alright, so I should also lower these down to eight critters. We don't need that many. Hopefully more of them uh, get bopped. And then... Man, it's really just carbon dioxide here. Uh, there is this line. I'm gonna start doing that again. There's actually power on that. Wow. Okay, so... Pump. Ventilation. We'll have that. Auto save lag. I gotta get rid of the gases. I gotta do something about it. And then this was supposed to be... That is connected. This is gonna be pee water that's not bottled. I mean, uh, not from the pitcher pump. We basically want the stragglers of pee water. Things that are uh, a little bit on the warmer side. Alright, so... It's maintaining temperature. Interesting. Take the glass. So the temperature is actually uh, going up and down at the same time. Looks like a net zero. Don't mind that. Don't mind that. I do want to take out as much of the pee water as I can, though. Because that's the warm pee water. Oh, now this is a vacuum. Good stuff, good stuff. Internet tubes are unclogged. Dude, so the tech guy came yesterday. The tech guy, cool guy, very cool, very professional. Came by, checked my modem, said the modem looks like it's fine. But he said it, it did look like an older model and he asked me how long I had that. And I was like, oh, it's been about two years. So he, he was like, okay, cool. Uh, he's going to go outside and check the line directly. So we go, we go outside to the back. And we checked the uh, the hard line that comes from the telephone wires or the towers, telephone towers, right? That big, you know, pole they have to climb up with the wires on it. So he tested that. He's like, huh, you know, it's uh, not even your modem. <laughs> he was like, dude, there's, there's a problem with the line directly. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, uh... I checked the modem, I thought that was it, but he's like, now that I'm looking at the line, it looks like, you know, this is, uh, this is a, a thing to do with, uh, the node in the area. You said that it could either be the node or the amplifier, because he was talking about how, where the internet comes from, there's like a headquarters, and then they have to like, just map out the wire from that area out to distribute the internet. And the problem is, is that when we're so far away, they actually have to make a separate setup where they send out and build a amplifier so that it could receive the signal and then redistribute it. So they're thinking something is going on at the node. It could either be the amplifier or something else going wrong. And because of that, um, he was like, yeah, I can't do anything. But he said he'll check. And I said, okay, cool. So he's, he made a ticket for me and uh, said that there's an issue at my uh, local node. Ch he checked out the tower and everything too. And that was it. Of course, I checked though, like after the, uh, 
Wow, I'm out of power. I checked after everything. And, uh, yeah, internet was still down. <laughs> I was like, oh, that sucks. So, you know, you couldn't do much. Oh, it wasn't down, but, you know, it was, uh, still the same slow speed. After a while, uh, I guess the, the maintenance guys finally got through, and he did it same day. So that was awesome. So the tech guy came at, he was here from 10 in the morning till, like, noonish. Because he had to check a couple things. He also replaced my modem, gave me the, the modern version. So it was kind of tight. Internet is no longer, uh, you know, very slow upload. No more drop in frames, and I'm happy. Can't be mad. If you guys notice too, the uh, audio is a little bit better. Because when I did a Windows update, it wiped out my uh, sound card drivers. Like, it literally just deleted it. And I had to reinstall it. <laughs> so it's, it should be better now. Like, before I was noticing a subtle difference. And I was like, something's off. And, and then I found out. I was like, okay, my drivers are not installed. <laughs> Cthulhu, thank you so much for the Prime. Coming in with the 19th month. On that 16th month streak. Sweet 16, man. I see you over the Cthulhu. Thanks so much for the support. And of course, enjoy the emote, the 20 dice ad free viewing. I got a long hair inside of here. Dude, I got a random 2% long hair. Oh, come on. I got a 2% long hair, dude. I'm kind of mad. But thank you so much, man. Enjoy the emote D20 does and reviewing. Don't forget that legit sub band. But yo, appreciate the support. What's going on, Killer Renee? How are you? I see you over there. How is the things, Killer Renee? And how is the Thursdays? You doing alright, man? And you, the internet's back. I'm doing great. Now, the, the bad news is, is that I'm only back for today. I got some things to take care of over the next few days, and I should be back Monday. But, uh, yeah, outside of that, you know, I'm just happy to be able to stream again. And it was tough not being able to stream. I was just constantly checking my internet, not doing anything. I would literally just sit around like I, I, I couldn't. Like, literally couldn't do anything. It was tough. Oh, dude, you're on the uh, four-day work week, Killer Renee? That's awesome. How has that been for you? Is the four-day work week nice? How does that compare to the the old school five-day eight hours? Because you're still doing four days. It's nice so far. So you have the extra day off, and it's f so you work Monday Monday to Thursday, huh? That's kind of cool. So the pay is the same. Everything's the same. It's literally just Monday to Thursday. Oh, that's nice. I would honestly. Man, three days in a row? Or would you want to do two, one, two, two, two? Two days work, two days, uh, two days work, one day off, two days work, two days off, two days work, one day off, two days work, two days off. I feel like, I don't know, man. Having Wednesday off is kind of nice. <laughs> that's just me, though. You like the three days in a row. Technically, that's better for traveling. You get to do more, right? You don't have to worry about as much in terms of like, you know, oh yeah, we could only go for a day. So if, if you do things that are time consuming like that, where you have to spend time to get to point A, point B, whatever it may be, I could see that being super beneficial. So how, what have you done with the extra days off, Killer Renee? I gotta ask. Have you done anything uh, different on the extra days off so far? Well, where did this guy come from? This guy was just born. Did they lay an egg off of the side and it fell down here? That's really weird. 
<laughs> That's actually really weird. What the heck? I see you, Killer Renee. You know, I gotta be real. I I would not want to do three days in a row because I would be, I would hate myself. I already know what I would do. And the thing I would do is I would stay up super late. <laughs> I would totally do that, man, without fail. I would stay up super late and ruin my sleep schedule. And the funny thing is, is that I would be doing that every Friday. I mean, every Thursday night, I would stay up as late as I can. And then it's like, oh, I got an extra day to catch back up. And then it's like, it's, it's Sunday night and I'm still not sleeping. <laughs> They're like, I, I, I can't do it, man. I feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice. 100%. 100%. Oh, I can't put that there because of the ladder. Feels bad. I'll have to put it here then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right? I feel like I would be tempted to do that so often that I can't help it. And then, oh, I got the extra day off, man. It's like, it's like, and then when you have Monday off, oh god, dude. Can you imagine having Monday off? That's a four day weekend. I'm just saying, this, this, this is going to be crazy. So, Killer Renee, what kind of games are you playing now, man? What's the game of choice? How are you uh, choosing to enjoy the weekends? I gotta ask, man. Rocket League and League of Legends. Hey, I see you, man. That's a pretty solid combo. Can't complain. Can't complain. Did I just hear Rocket League? Yo, Killer Renee, if you didn't know, Pigeon over here is Grandmaster. His MMR rating is 2.2k. This guy's this guy's a legend, dude. He flies his Rocket League car better than a pigeon flies in the sky. I'm just saying, man. This guy air dribbles, dude. One wing at a time. It's amazing, dude. He even has a a a uh, piece of bread necklace around his vehicle, dude. It's 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 pretty gangster. It's pretty gangster, man. Yeah, dude, you just look at Pigeon's car, man. That shit's decked out. It's like he took his car to pit my ride and exhibits like, oh, your name's Pigeon, aficionado. Let me put you a pigeon in a pigeon. So that you flying while you flying. It'd be like that sometimes, man. That's how you live the dream. What rank are you? A hey. C1 since last season. Before that C2. I see you guys, I see you guys. This should be all solid, to be honest. Just for the, the move speed bonus. We don't need the airflow there anymore. Damn. That's top 10%. I'll see you guys over there. i see you guys over there. You guys playing for keeps? i see you. Huh. Up here is cold, huh? But I want to move the water to down there. 
Oh, I guess I could do it like this. Enable auto bottle. And then we drip out the cold pee water over here. And we let the temperature that's 20 degrees warm it up. That's a bad strat, but we got to do it. <laughs> we got to do what we got to do. And then I got to move my polluted dirt out. I got to move that grubbling, though. Move him to this room. Wrangle. Take that out of there. Good stuff. Pumping out the CO2. Where is this polluted oxygen coming from? I'm getting so confused. Where is the polluted oxygen coming? It's it feels like I'm they're they're getting it from the suits or something. Wait, if you click on a suit, can you see how much CO2 is inside? <laughs> That'd be kind of tight. I want to see the gas spread inside of a suit. You can't see that, huh? Okay. Dude, we should we should be able to see that. Inside of the Atlas suit. There's an oxygen tank, but we don't see the CO2 amount. I don't know where I'm getting this polluted oxygen from. I'm confused, man. Alright, we're also going to put some windows here. Just for the citizens, and then airflow on the top. Dude, where are the PO2 coming from? Oh, it's coming from here and it's just moving horizontal. Okay, okay. Okay. I mean, it makes sense for us to have some deodorizers here. Although this is a lot of wattage, it's actually not too bad. Oh, I forgot I could remove that. Yeah. I could actually just pull this across. Alright, alright. So we're trying to heat this up as much as we can. It's gonna take some time though for this to steady out. And I should not need this airflow anymore. Because there's no need for the water to become condensed. All right, now we also have a lot of lumber that's also being spread out, so we're doing pretty good. And then we are slowly warming up the area so that this area could uh, heat up, build some more trees. We got to do it. Ah, that's right, this area. We have a power line that's not used anymore. I can actually relocate my lines then. Swap this line to go up and have this go somewhere else. And then have this line go somewhere else. I, I might actually do that. That's an idea. That's an idea. Alright, so some of the water here... I mean, it's, it's positive. Can't really complain. As long as the water is not negative, it doesn't freeze, break my pipes, I should be good. And cut the power. Gonna leave a little bit there as a buffer. Alright, alright. So we do need a liquid lock here, and I do need to wall this up, but I'm not too worried. I need to get ethanol in here before we do any of that, because it's not going to be cold enough. And then I'm not worried about the gases. The oxygen should be fine. I do want to get rid of the uh, ox uh, polluted oxygen, though. So let me get the random tile to try to bop it right on the face. Mine that tile. Get those two out of there. I could probably actually mine all that. Get rid of the top ladder. 
and then hmm I'm thinking about letting some of the cold energy come outside at the bottom it feels like it makes sense oh this is already in a vacuum oh the CO2 is struggling to come out at least we know that it's uh it's trying to get moved. It's just that some of the gas flow is impeding the uh, movement, which is fine. Can we keep this open? That'd be kind of nice. Wait, can the gases just come out? Is this even a door? What kind of door is this? Is this pneumatic? All right. Anyways, we opened it. <laughs> Whatever's. Alright, and let me cut this off. So we cut it off because the gas levels are in grams. We're not getting, you know, efficient packet size. So we're just going to trim that down a little bit. That being said, one, two, three, four. So it is a ladder like that. And I need to do something with the water. Okay. So most likely we remove those two. And... Oh, we lost the wire, which is fine. We'll just remove the rest of it. And then I do pitcher pump this. Just to bring the water out. Okay. So this is minus two. 400 kilograms. It's not bad. This is sweep only, liquefy bolts. And we gotta remove some of the ice and whatnot. Liquefiable. Oop, snap. Ah, damn it. Yeah, there we go. So we need to do that. Yeah. Still, it feels like whenever I get the feeling that it improved and should get a little higher, the overall improves the same at the same time, so I'm stuck. Oh, dude, you know what's funny? I've had that feeling before. I know exactly what you're talking about. When uh, uh, you guys, you guys probably are familiar with. Uh, I mean, if you play League, there's no way you don't know about Dota, right? So you know about Defense of the Ancients, the original MOBA game before League of Legends was a thing, right? So when when uh, Dota first came out, not Dota 2, but the original Dota game that was on Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne custom maps, if you remember that. That was when I first played Dota because, you know, that was that was new at the time. Me and, me and the homies were playing it. It was a fun time. Now... When that was a thing, I was ahead of the curve because it was the game me and my friends played. So I wanted it to be better than my friends. <laughs> so it's not like I put extra time into it or anything like that, but I actually put an effort when I played and it wasn't like, oh, you play just a throw or anything like that. So what happened was, was that, um, you know, I learned certain characters and got good with them and eventually i got better than all my friends so i had some crazy games and then what happened was is that i took a break i took a break from playing dota and that was when another game came out and we all moved to the other game but dota's it's one of those games right where you don't really have to play long term you can just play one game a day and there's like no foundation behind it everything's skill based so after I took a break, I started to see everyone else in like the public matches get a lot better. So like a lot of the things I used to do, everyone started to do it. So I used to last hit creeps, right? Because I realized that you get money from getting the killing blow. Everyone started to do that. Now I know that I didn't originate it. It's something that it's like if you play the game long enough, you'll eventually see the pattern. So I'm not mad that they stole the strats. Like, no, 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 like they were supposed to learn that. But eventually 
everyone started denying as well. I didn't think about that. So they were denying EXP, and then this was before like the meta. So you would basically do uh, two two one, and you wouldn't solo mid. You would run two mid back in the day, and the the logic was was that you have one guy roam the river to gank, but you would play two mid, and if you push mid. You have like really good positioning because the distance in mid travel is a lot faster than top or bottom. And man, you saw everyone just get better. And eventually it got to the point where I was a common person again. <laughs> I was no longer ahead of the curve. I was just one of the common folk. <laughs> that was a sad day, man, when, when uh, that realization came to be. I'm just a normal pan now. I'm no longer special. So I feel that killer in it. it, it it's tough when you see it happen real time. You get better, but everyone else gets better too. And then it's like, damn, I'm not getting good enough fast enough. Ooh, another snazzy. I think we'll take that. I need to start upgrading some of my clothes, man. Real talk. Oh, man, it's way too cold. It's actually way too cold. I'm actually impressed. <laughs> it's so cold that my water is going to freeze. Oh, man. All right. So I don't want to tepidize that, but there's no real other way for me to kind of like introduce a little bit of heat. So I will put a space heater here. Like, that's literally probably the easiest way for me to do it. So let me go like that. So we can always disconnect the uh, pump line. Now back to here. There is bathroom water. There is plastic on the ground. Let's get some more data banks. You never know how much you need. Space heater is like nothing. See, I only need the water to be above zero, though, full on. That's the thing. I just need it to be above zero. <laughs> Once it's above zero, I don't have to worry about it freezing randomly. I see you, flew one. How are you today? How was the Thursdays, man? Man, when I wasn't streaming, dude, I actually felt like I lost my purpose in life. <laughs> is that embarrassing to say, man? When I wasn't streaming, it felt like I lost my purpose in life. Is that weird for me to say that, man? It's not that cold, I see. I mean, it's, it's originally minus 15. It feels that way, man. Too real for me, IRL. I literally just sat here, not knowing what I should do with the extra free time I got. Cyberdyne can't eat, feels bad. He needs to be tall enough to eat. Glad you found a purpose. You gotta have one, man. Gotta have a purpose. All right, all right. So, I guess I could try to do a weird strat. Where I do it like this. And I would do this with the logic being that I want to get my next tree farm sooner than later. So this way I don't have to use my space heater to heat up the entire cold area and we'll just start planning out our arbitraries for the next row. I think that has to work that way. All right, so we'll cut the power again. Let's add some uh, pea water. And then if it gets uh too cold, the space heater will heat it up. Hopefully. <laughs> the setup inside. 
there's only a little bit of water now. That's nice. Having it all steam is such a good feeling. 20 tons of sand. It's going up there. It's going up there. All right, so the seal two levels is dropping it. It has steady down, so I could set that up now. Oh, it's not actually connected, even though it looks like it. There we go. So when that's fine, we could start pumping again. All right, so the deodorizers here are looking healthy. I need more deodorizers because I do want to get rid of the uh, polluted oxygen. Oh, that reminds me. I got to snipe this. Oh, it didn't work. P oxygen is floating everywhere. Feels bad, man. At least we'll be able to destroy that one. Alright, so... This was supposed to hold the oil coming from the other planet. Should be fine. Alright, so I should be able to mine this out. Mine that out. Sweep everything here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting colder, or it's getting warmer inside. That's what I want to see. I also don't think it's a problem. I take breaks from playing games sometimes, and I'm like, hmm, this sucks. <laughs> I feel that. But, yeah. This sucks would probably be, like, a very overly simple way of putting it. I, f I was literally just sitting here, like, just, just, like, I knew that I wasn't really ready to start doing, like, steady shoots yet. So I've just been, like, writing scripts. <laughs> Setting it up. So, like, writing was, was just typing it out easier than, like, actually getting into recording. So that's all I've been doing. Just a little bit of writing. Now, it's not like I'm writing a novel, though. Just trying to set myself up. Even then, though, it's like some of the times I would just sit here. Literally doing nothing. Just standing. Sitting. Getting up. Pat Mamba. Sitting back down. Such a weird feeling sometimes. Why is there so much polluted oxygen? I need to get rid of this. Water is at minus three. It's warming up though. I should try to move some of the cold pee water here, man. Real talk. That'd probably be mad convenient. Alright, so we gotta mop that up. We're getting rid of our sublimination stations setups. And we're going to bop the vacuum. Feels bad, man. Nice. So this is going to power only this setup, which is okay. And then we'll get rid of the other tiles that are in the way. So we'll get rid of this and that. Put solid tiles here. Nope. I could jump. Okay, I could do this now. Nice. And then I could get back to the wheels. Nice. Okay, okay. Waiting for that. Dude, it's it's warming up a lot faster. This is so much better. So I should be able then to... Well, I'll wait till this seals up. I don't want to do it too early. Get that right there. Get that. And then these two. I can actually walk here to mine that out. And then... Mind that like that. 
cool, cool. Let me try to trim that as well. And then minus two. Rockets out. I don't think he's dying yet. <laughs> Damn, yeah, 60 data banks. Oh, it's time to go home. He's starving, he's starving. He'll be fine, he'll be fine. Okay, so because we destroyed our sublimination stations, damn it, I keep saying it wrong, I will be rebuilding a new one, and it's going to be over here, but I need to get the water into here first. So I guess we'll also move in the water, just drip out the water, why not? We do have some just on the ground for no reason. Wait, was that the pea water with the germs in it? Well, pea water, not polluted water, but actually from the bathrooms. There's actually no germs. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm not even mad. There's no germs on it. I can't be mad. <laughs> So we're gonna be we're making a Paku farm. If we get Paku, we're gonna start trying to raise it. And then we are gonna be building more trees. We're probably gonna wanna remove the rusty oxidizers. I'm gonna try to move the polluted dirt generation into over here. And then I'll probably have to seal off the top, to be honest. So they can't walk through the top. They have the bottom though, which is pretty good. And then I'll probably have to redo like my mealwood farms. I don't need them anymore. I have a lot of food. And then, hmm, I could put wheel runners inside of here. It's, it's, it's potential. Oh, what the heck? Oh, wow. It pumped out all the oxygen. Oh, look at the gas. Okay. It's evening out. Dude, we vacuumed it from the bottom before the top collapsed on us. That's kind of impressive. All right, let's mine both of these. Uh, I have to release the chlorine, so we'll just bop that. And then there's nothing to do with the brine. I guess I could dump that here. Just dump out the brine, and that's going to be from here. This is also in brine, which is fine. We'll dump some of that out. Cold energy. It's cold energy. Alright, so this is ready, right? Okay, so I should be able to... No pipes. Remove that. And then remove this and mine that as well. One, two, three, four. So for this to work, I needed this to be a solid tile. And then we'll start moving everything out as we can. Whoa, too much pee water. Holy crap. My bad, my bad. Holy crap, my bad, my bad. <laughs> uh, dude, when you stop paying attention and whatever you're boiling on the pot on the stove overboils, it's a bad feeling, man. It's a bad feeling. You hate to see it. So I'm thinking the rusty oxidizers go over here. Makes a lot of sense. We have the cold water that we could run through a like radiator system. And then that radiator system basically just maintains temperature, which is not bad. I could start taking out the pea dirt from here and start using that as a uh, thing over here. Oh, can't I do that? Oh, they spilled pee water into here. Oh, and it's too much liquid? Oh, come on. Oh, this has got to be a meme. All right, once the water gets heavy enough, or it gets, gets enough to be a second layer, I believe the polluted water should just take the bottom layer by itself. I'm pretty sure that should be the case. 
Alright, this is still at minus four, though. I need to wait for this to heat up. Alright, so the dude's back. Uh, we grabbed one artifact. Which one was that? That one was from the Forested. We should go grab the second artifact. Audrey inspect it, but we haven't grabbed the artifact yet. Okay. Recently got some liquid behavior that was weird. Huh. Feels bad. Oh, wait. Doesn't that mean I should be able to crush the pea water like this? Oh, I don't have a... Uh, I don't have space. <laughs> I was like, couldn't I just crush that? Feels weird, man. I hope it fixes, man. I don't want to deal with it. Oh, I have a lot of databanks, actually. That's kind of sweet. Alright, so this is a solid space right there. We mine that out. We do allow a little bit of cold energy to leak out. I think that's a good strat. Alright, so another thing is I do need the second layer due to how a lot of this is set up. I need to put the doors in, right? And that means I need this here. Like, it should move like that, I suppose, but I don't like... But it don't, lol. <laughs> like, petrol won't float uh, even on oil, but with bumps, ETC. Ah. I wonder if there's, like, another stat for that. Like, a spill stat. Because you know how Viscal Gel stands up vertically? So we know that attribute exists, right? Where if you pour out a liquid, it's going to want to stay on one tile until the, the volume goes over a certain amount. Or the mass of the liquid, whatever it is. I feel like that's a stat, or it should be. That, you know, you could manipulate it, I want to say. I feel like it makes sense. I feel like it makes sense. Oh, research is done. Nice. Alright, so the last tech is hydrogen, which I don't need. So we'll go for the other tech first. That's a lot smaller. Alright, so we let out the chlorine. Chillin'. I need to pitcher pump the brine. We're waiting for that. We're gonna take care of this. I'll probably mine out the abyssalite. It makes a lot of sense. We'll mine this out right here. Actually, we'll mine out this tile and try to get the oil. <laughs> we want the oil, boys. You know what it is. Oil is life. How come none of this CO2 wants to come down? I guess it's just going to take time. Oh, there it is. Mop it up. Hey, we got it. Alright, alright. That's a lot of crude oil. I wonder how much carbon dioxide I'm going to get in here eventually. It's going to be a lot. Uh, we also have water here that I need to do something with now. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. How come this is clean water? I didn't do anything to this. You know what? Water does die off. I mean, germ food poisoning does die off. It does die off of liquids. maybe or is it a percentage thing no it's just percentage yeah and we're adding more germs into it you know what we could probably do put like a layer of chlorine right here easy setup <laughs> i mean it's possible that's actually very likely oh body temperature is getting bopped okay so we'll just uproot that we're not going to want to deal with that anymore Oh my god. Come on, man. Doesn't want to spread? Alright, we got the strats. I'm going to build a tile here. And when I deconstruct it, we're going to get a vacuum. And the polluted water is going to win. Every time. We got the strats. We got the strats. Alright, this is actually okay again. Oh, 
Oh, it didn't work. I lied. It didn't work. I thought the dream was alive. All right, we got to do it the other way. Or was it because the water fell down? And that's why? All right, so I got to try this because I want to see if this actually works. Theoretically, because this polluted water tile is surrounded by water, it should get deleted if I build a tile on top. And it does. Oh, it works. It works, baby. So if a water tile is surrounded by water and you build a uh, tile on top of that different element water, it gets crushed. That's actually a good thing to know. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, I'm out of power. Yo, my, can we get a, se a second hamster wheel? Oh, that in and of itself is using all my power right here. That's pretty funny. Alright, we need the backup manual gen. Y'all know what it is. Hey, what's going on, Lemniscus? How are you? We're celebrating the return of internet. And, uh, damn, it feels good to have internet. <laughs> I will say that much. Damn, it feels good to be able to stream. Yeah, more commonly, if no tiles of the same type, it will be destroyed. Yep, yep. But uh, I had some internet problems. I'm just happy they're fixed, to be honest. And I'm happy to be back. Oh man, I feel you. I just moved houses. Only had mobile hotspot for almost two weeks. Two weeks, dude, man. If anything, man, if I if I move into a new place, I will literally like be like, "Hey, is the internet and all the utilities already set up?" No. All right, man. Before I move in, I'm literally gonna try to set that up before I actually move. <laughs> Cause, dude, that stuff is a pain, man. So, so let me guys, let me tell you guys a story. When when I was in college, um, during our second year, we were looking for a house to rent, right? Because it was cheaper than renting out an apartment in terms of square footage. And because it was right next to the university, a lot of the housing there was also being leased out in that fashion, right? We would, you know, be directly with the owner. We wouldn't have to deal with, you know, the... the uh, apartment monopoly that they have in the area and things like that so we thought to ourselves you know that's a win-win for us we help out small guys they tend to be you know not anal about everything and you know we get more more place to kind of just have more room for activities so we found a place it was close enough and you know we we uh, rented it out for a year. So on on move-in day, right? Because it was like all that was set up. We were like, oh yeah, uh, one of our other friends, not me and my immediate roommate that shared the same room. We're like, hey, is everything ready? He's like, yep, everything's good. Uh, let's just start moving our stuff over there and move the beds. Uh, I'm going to bring a truck so we can move the sofa later. And uh, yeah, let's start moving. So we, we start moving and we go over there and one of my roommates goes, I got to take a dump. So he takes a dump. He flushes, right? But the water doesn't fill back up. <laughs> and we're like, yo, man, call the utilities. Like, oh yeah, I'll call him right now. <laughs> so I was lucky that the water was there in the toilet bowl. Because when he flushed, you know, it just it just all went down. But Tollable didn't fill back up. <laughs> it was pretty funny, man. It was pretty funny. We were just having nothing bad happen. Like, imagine. Took a dump. Water wasn't working. We had to let it sit. Oh, that would have been gross, dude. Now, that being said, that happened, actually. Eventually. Dude, college, man. Where the worst things happen.
there was another time where the first clog in the house and we realized no one had a plunger. <sighs> oh man, the stupid things that happen, man. Y'all, man, y'all got a plunger? Toilet's clogged. Nope. Oh, what? Oh, man. That was all she wrote. Shitter was actually clogged. No, no plunger, dude. It was a bad time. I was just lucky that I didn't have to share that bathroom. There we go. One, two, three. So I do need to get rid of the ladders. I should move the pipes in all realisticness. So that's an exhaust pipe. I get rid of that. And I also should have this moved down like so, so I can get rid of this pipe. Cause that's gonna be in the way. I'm gonna leave this like this so that we could kind of just push out the polluted oxygen going outside to the right. Cause I need to move the, the, the pee dirt anyways. Alright, so we spilled pee water. We gotta pick that up first before we start pulling from the uh, from the well, so to speak. All that cold water over there. I should probably crack this at the bottom so that the, the warm energy starts warming up the ice biome right here. I feel like I should actually do that. Because we're doing something on this side like that. Although it honestly doesn't matter too much. Alright, so the guy is not outside, that's fine. Wasn't enough time, I got you, Liniscus. I got you, I got you. So dude, Liniscus, how are you? What games are you looking at right now? What are you playing? What's the game of choice? Any games that are coming out that you're like, dude, this is gonna be hot. Any games coming out that you're keeping an eye out on? I guess I should start setting up my setup for this area. It doesn't honestly need to be that large, so something like this should be fine. Leave a one tile gap right there. And we'll probably do a vacuum lock setup. Of course, that means I do need to solidify the inside like this. So we just drop a bottle on both sides and should be good. The water here is five degrees. That's nice. I can actually plug that in then. That's gonna be on the side. There we go. Sweep that from that side. Playing WoW for now, had a good run with Oni, but I stopped playing after we uh, broke up with... Oh, what? Dude, that's tough. That's tough, Mr. Liniscus. Broke up with the girl. Broke up with Oni. Feels bad, man. Come on, dude. You know Oni's never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and hurt you. But I gotta ask, does that mean you're playing Dragonflight right now? The new expansion? I heard they're copying Guild Wars 2 and their mount system. Or some of it. And I'm not gonna lie, I played Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is, is amazing. And their mount system is actually the best. Isn't it? Uh... 
maybe it's early access like uh like is it out i'm not actually sure i think i saw that like it was coming out or something like that and it might be like early alpha testing who knows Yeah, Shadowlands was the last one. Next one is Dragonflight. Hey, Cthulhu knows. He knows the song, man. Not yet. Oh, it's not out yet. Okay, okay. Hey, man, it's not out. It's fine. It's fine. Are you playing Classic or are you playing the uh, Shadowlands right now, Liniscus? And, our, and also, PR Deltoid, how are you? Are you going to be playing that WoW as well? I don't know whether or not I should play, uh... So here's the thing. When TBC Classic came out, I was like, dude... Burning Crusade was the best expansion pack. And I, I wanted to get back into it. I tried, but I couldn't. <laughs> I'll say that. I tried, but I couldn't. So I'm, I'm finding myself saying the same thing... For Wrath of the Lich King. I'm kind of hyped about going back to Wrath of the Lich King because that was when uh, the class I enjoyed, Shaman, was at the, the peak of its class. But then after after Wrath, it's like Shamans are just kind of whatevers. In Wrath, Shamans actually felt like a good hybrid of uh, caster and uh, physical damage. But yeah, I'm thinking to myself, maybe it's the same thing that happened when I wanted to play BC. You know? I don't actually want to play, I just have nostalgic feelings. Yeah, yeah, but you can't recapture the same feeling the second time. That's what I'm thinking about too. It's probably not worth it. It's probably not worth the man. Dude, 10 mans and 25s each dungeon. See, that, see, it was great because of that. We, we like, so when I was playing Wrath, I, I had, I actually got every Proto Drake, except for Black Dragon. And that's because we had another character. Oh, crap. It's cold damage. It's because we had a character it, 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 that um, was just really bad. Like, the only achievement we couldn't do was Immortal on 25 man. And that's because we had literally one guy that was just really bad at the game. And for whatever reason, well, I know why. He actually paid gold to my guild leader. Um, he never got kicked. <laughs> So because he paid gold to the guild leader, he never got kicked. And because of that, we never got immortal. So um, literally, he would be the only guy in our 25 mans that was holding us back. And he was also playing a shaman. That was the funny thing. Uh, so in the 10 man version, we got everything. We got the plague proto drake. We got all the hard mode achievements, Nax, Uldar, whatever. It was easy. And dude, we did. We even did Eye of Eternity Malagos, the hard mode in the uh, time constraint, which requires you to play perfectly. Like you can't miss Dragon Phase. You got to do good TPS. And in uh, Ten Man, we also did. We did no light in the darkness. No, well, no, we did one light first, but we eventually did no light. And even with all that. I would still say the hardest achievement to get was Firefighter. We spent the most time on Mimron Firefighter, dude. That shit... I don't even remember what it was that was hard about it. I just remember that that took us the longest. One light was not that bad. It was just a DPS check and gear check, to be honest. But yeah. It's like, I have some fond memories of Wrath. I just don't know if I should ever go back. And I'm thinking that I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm actually thinking that I shouldn't. And I'm thinking that that's a fair, fair assessment.
Don't go back to Wrath, man. Oh, Firefighter. That was Ulduar. Mimron is a robot. And he kind of has like the Bowser from Super Mario Brothers. It's like a little flying machine. It's the Mimron head. And he'll have phases. And one of the phases he has is that he'll fly up and shoot fire. And then he'll put uh, these robots on the ground. And the robots, I think, spread fire. But if you... I, I don't remember if this is true though. Damn. I think it was something like if you deal enough damage to it, they switch from spreading fire to putting out the fires. And we had to put out a certain amount of fires, but everything was on a timer. So you had to do everything perfect and fast, but there was a lot of RNG into it. But yeah, Old War, Memron fight. Long, long time ago. My series rating days were in uh, Mr. Pandaria. After that, I got more casual. See, I didn't raid in Mr. Pandaria because it was too easy. And I was like, nah, it's, it's, this is, this is, I'm quitting. <laughs> and that was it. That was it, man. I was like, what is this? Miss Pandora is kind of weak sauce. What's going on here? All right, man, I'm out. That that was my experience with Miss Pandaria. 6.9. And then I came back for, was it Cataclysm? That was just, was stupid. My first attempt on one of the dungeons was literally the hard mode version and i was like i don't know what i'm doing they're like oh legit just stick to the tank and you'll be fine i'm like okay cool <laughs> and we did it and i was like okay what is this what is this expansion why is it that easy and then i quit after that as well <laughs> i i didn't play draenor because i heard it was just travesty of an experience I heard it was a travesty, man. Like, you don't want to play Draenor, man. Still, we have to wait for the gas to condense down, which is not bad. No one is really pulling the brine. It's probably because of this, right? I need the brine water to be dropped off here. Wait, that's brine, right? They could reach that. How come no one wants to drop that? No pending delivery. Oh, it's sweep only. Oh, I'm stupid. It was a whole month for me, dude. I hated the later expansions because of how they treated legendaries. Like, ah, man. It, it became like the Oprah Winfrey meme. You get a legendary, you get a legendary, and you get a legendary. Everybody gets a legendary weapon, accessory, or whatever. And then I was kind of like, oh, this is weak, dude. What happened to actually going out of your way to make a hand of Ragnaros? You know, it's like, this lost all its meaning to me. WAD was a mobile game. WoW burned me out fast. Boring first raid and Dungeons IMO. It was. World of Draenor was just a bad expansion. Like, everything about it was, was subpar. And it felt like... Cash grab, man. Yeah, everyone was hiding in their garrisons, dude. And it was so lonely, because it was like... You're just in your garrison alone. No one to talk to. Just join Discord, LMA LMAO. <laughs> right? Just talk in Discord, LMAO. And I was like, oh, God. I feel like there's so many bad decisions that happen in the later expansions that slowly just all the bad decisions eventually compounded because they never changed from their bad decision making. And what I mean by that is not that you can't consistently, it's, I mean, it's not that you can't make bad decisions, but when you make a bad decision and then double down on it, it just feels bad. Yeah, like, player housing should be purely cosmetic. Like, um... Uh, I mean, I don't really like exactly how the way Guild Wars 2 does it, but it makes sense how they do it. 
where it's like player housing is instanced, right? And then you could, you know, invite people to the house and you guys hang around. And then you, there's actually benefits for inviting people. But that's all you're able to do. Like reap the benefits if you invest in trying to get the benefit. Outside of that, there's no benefit. I was a fan of how Guild Wars 2's did it. It was nice. Yeah, in-game housing would be insanely expensive, or there'll be massive suburbs or MMO. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you need to have player housing be instanced. How do you guys feel about... Have you guys played Black Desert Online? Have you guys seen how BDO does it? They make it so that you guys outbid each other for the, the housing. And then there's, there's the one where there's like, oh, it's just instance, so you could just buy it. <laughs> and then everyone else can have the same house. And, you know, you guys can compare houses and layouts, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I feel like I don't like it how it's like in Final Fantasy, which is like you have the large suburbs, but then you get to a point where you can't buy houses in Final Fantasy anymore. Right. And the reason being is because, oh, they're all bought out already by the people that have been playing. So it's a first come first serve thing, which I mean, makes sense for the early adopters. But when you're not an early adopter, it just feels like it's gatekeeping. It's kind of cool. Elite in-game housing or cheaper instance housing. I feel like that could, I, yeah, I feel like you should have like a combination where it's like you have your common houses that are cheaper that everyone could buy. And then you could have like a set of housing that is a one of, and you have the richest people bid on it kind of a thing. That could be kind of cool. So like you have your, you know, your, your, your section of the area where everyone kind of like lives and you just pick one of the houses and it's instanced. And then you have like the rich neighborhood that's actually at the hub. Like where the auction house is, where the blacksmiths are to repair, where the crafting stations are. And then you actually have to pay like against other players for that. That could be kind of cool. That way it's balanced. All right, so the rocket's still back home. That's fine. Create some MMO ghettos. Hey, man, they don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. And it really do be like that sometimes. Uh, I believe for this to work, I need to have this be solid. Yeah, should be fine. And then this is above, so I should be able to purify this now. Yeah, man, have some MMO ghettos. That'd be kind of funny. Dude, you should have, we should, you should make it so that you could get the cheapest form of housing and it's like really cheap, but it's literally like a uh, camper's tent in the middle of like the street. So it's kind of like, you know, where the homeless live. <laughs> that's messed up, man. But I feel like that's, that's so realistic. There's so many people that would be like, yeah, I don't need a house. I just need to have a little pit stop to drop some stuff off. It's kind of like you're playing Skyrim and you, you do the white run quest to kill the dragon just so that you get Breeze home and spend only 5k instead of like 15 or 20 for a cheap house. And then you just drop off all your potions in there that you never use. It'd be kind of like that, man. Does ESO have owls? I've never played ESO. I'm not actually sure. Offline Skyrim though, different beasts, different beasts. All right, so the idea here is that I need to have mesh tiles here. And I think I can go off as far as this. And we'll do this much for now. Curative tablets. I don't have medicine, so I might as well take it. 
I'm probably gonna have Ryan here. It makes a lot of sense. All right, almost all the water is taken away. So let's cut this off. Put some more pea water in there. All right, so we're going to be moving all the sublimination stations over here and move them over here. And we're going to have all the pea dirt here. I don't even know if I want to have... Actually, I will. I will put sublimation stations. God, I keep saying it wrong. And then I'll put a combination of that with storage storage bins like that and we'll use these to kind of have the dupes put the stuff inside and I think what would make sense is putting a cooling loop in the bottom well maybe in on top of the deodorizers as well just because of how the uh, the sands coming from the inside so it's kind of bad oh this is already done all right we're gonna do pokey shell mold this is eight We'll do another granite 99. We have way too much of those uh, things anyways. We have a lot of salt. I should do salt 99 as well. Get some uh, table salt for the duplicates. That wouldn't be bad. We're out of water for the science? Okay. I actually need water. Oh, that could come from here. We'll get the food poisoning water. It makes a lot of sense. Now you have water for science. Oh, that means you're going to drop off the pea water here. Oh, there's already germs inside. Oh, damn it. All right, man. We're going to have to move a sandy shell into here eventually. I mean shaman. I played shaman. Dude, I've... I've been running the sublimination stations for oxygen since cycle one. And I've ran out of dirt ever since cycle 100. <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to believe, but it's true. I'm short on sand. When I made glass, I got destroyed because that ate up all of my sand. I used to have some uh, stations there. I have one here. We're doing a lot of uh, water sieving. We have polluted water source as well. <laughs> And there's no regolith up top. Feels bad, man. I'm running out of sand. No fire poles? My bad, my bad. We're getting some fire poles today. They're getting some poles. I mean, shaman. So, well, we'll tell the story. So, when I first played Classic, I made a warrior. I didn't like how slow the warrior played. In classic so I made a mage after I hit level 20 so when I hit level 20 I was like this is slow I'm not a fan so I made a mage when I was leveling the mage uh, TBC came out when TBC came out I was playing my mage and I was a frost mage and we did Karazhan and all that and then uh, all my friends quit. <laughs> all my friends quit. And I was like, damn. The, the people I'm raiding with right now that are pubbing, they're all bad. And we can't make progress. And they're, you know, always raging. So I was like, yeah, I can't really do anything about this. Come on, Oxifern. You need to work harder. Come on, Oxifer. You need to work harder. Herbicide 94. There it is. All of the housings should be identical. Do I need more Oxifer? I wouldn't mind making more. Because it's not dealing with the seal too fast enough. But you see, here's the thing. This was before they, they introduced looking for raid, right? And this is before looking for more for dungeons. So this was like we had to manually recruit. What's the device at the bottom of the rocket pod? Which, which device are you looking at? Red 9? 
Let me know. Dope. You gotta have housing, man. This is a wall toilet. When I take a dump, the uh, polluted water just gets dumped into the space vacuum. And then, uh, yeah, we just pipe it in with uh, clean water. I was testing it out to see if they actually dump the water outside, like right here. But they don't do that. <laughs> so it's kind of convenient. It just kind of like disappears. It's pretty sweet. Wall toilet, maybe it has the wall toilet. They don't use much CO2. It deletes the pure. It does. It does. So the thing about the wall toilet is that it uses... Uh, it creates less water than a regular toilet. But because of how this works... For whatever reason, when you go inside a spacefarer module, you st there still is radiation. So you're actually in space, so you teleport. It's kind of weird, but that's how that works. So when you're using the wall toilet, anything that outputs here, it's not actually into my uh, actual world. It's on a sub world or something like that. So because of that, the, the P water just gets deleted. So it's pretty convenient, but it also means that you have to deal with the radiation. So that kind of sucks. But don't you get net water from dupes? You do. So I do have my outside bathroom loop set up right here. In case they don't want to use the one at their house. Let's say that they have to take a uh, pee break in the middle of work. Whereas they have a personal toilet if they want to take one. <laughs> but for the most part, you are right. You either generate water from the toilets or you're net zero by using the sinks. So I don't really lose anything since I'm not using that water for anything. So I should be fine. So after I uh, played my mage and I found that I couldn't really do raids with anyone, like everyone in the media group was kind of bad, I switched servers and I made a new character and it was a shaman. That shaman uh, ended up being my main character throughout all the other expansions. And it was pretty cool. And it's warm enough. Nice. Oh, the mamba startled. So when I when I loved my shaman on a new server, I hit max level, met some people to raid with, everything was great. And then um my friends came back. <laughs> And they're like, hey, legit, switch servers, I don't know, whatever, so transfer servers. Played with them for a little bit. And then Wrath came out. Guess what? Wrath was fun for like the first month or two. And then my friends quit again. And then I was alone again. And I was like, man, fuck you guys. If you guys come back, I'm not coming back. And I found another guild that was a hardcore guild. They needed a shaman, because the shaman that I was talking about that held us back from getting immortal was their shaman. So if I replaced them on the 10-man raids, he, you know, they, they wouldn't have to struggle as hard. Eventually, the first 10-man we did, we got all the achievements that they couldn't get. And I was like, what was so hard about this? They were like, oh, you don't understand. The other shaman was doing half your damage and also dying a lot. And then they asked me, hey, what's the cooldown your reincarnation? I'm like, oh, I haven't used it yet. You see, they're like, yeah, that's why. <laughs> His would always be on cooldown. <laughs> Struggle is real, man. You hate to see it. But uh, yeah, man, that was the struggle. Oh, it's doing the pee water thing again. So I got to cut this. Ooh, nice. No water, but we have water right here. Oh, don't tell me they dropped it all off into the pool, dude. Oh, this is on. I need to turn this off. Wait a second. Am I actually out of water again? Insufficient water resource. Oh, God. Okay, how how cold is that? Okay, that's nice. I'm just gonna pitch a pump from here. <laughs> Convenience. And I think in order for this to work out well, 
I should do that. And then this. Because I don't want the pea water to be in the range of the roots. So we're going to try to allow more space for the pea water to be underneath everything. No longer touching the pea water. That's what I want to see. So this allows us to not pull pea water from here. Instead, pull it from the cold side. Which is going to be a little bit better for us. And did we remove? We did. Okay, so all the brine's gone. We can get rid of that. Mop that up. And then we could platform this out. Which is what I wanted to do. So that's good. But guys, thank you guys for tuning in today. How's everyone? Hope you guys are having a good Thursday today. Hope everyone's having a good week. I'm very sorry for the lack of streams due to the internet issues. But uh, we got a good tech stop by yesterday. And the tech helped us out with everything. Replaced the modem. Was able to locate and pinpoint the issue. Great guy, man. So I was happy to get a good tech yesterday. From the uh, ISP company. So how's everyone in chat though? How's everyone's Thursdays, man? You guys doing all right? You guys having a nice week? No research. Okay, so that's done. Okay, last tack, hydrogen rocket. Literally the last tack, nice. Plug slug, I actually don't want that guy. All right, so this is warm enough. Oh, I wonder if it's because of the water here. This is absorbing the heat from the heater and then redistributing it to the cold water. That's probably kind of nice. And then now I'm able to actually put Pakus in here now. That's going to be the goal, of course, getting some Paku in. Let me mop this up just so that we could just drop it back off. All right, so we'll extend that out while deconstructing this and doing something like that. All right, all right. So we're going to be trying to rob some bees today. We're going to go into this rocket. What the hell? There we go. And we're going to go try to rob some bees. Do I need anything here? So we're going to be going in here. It's pretty breathable. Okay, so these guys are still minus 30. Maybe I shouldn't want to rob them yet. Due to the fact that they're not wiped out. And I'm thinking that the moment that I do crack into this, they're going to get wiped out. Doing all right, man. Just busy as usual. Sorry to hear about the internet issues. Glad the tech was good. Yeah, man. Sometimes you get good tax. Sometimes you get bad tax. Such is life, though, right? It is what it is. Holy crap. Is this serious? I swept all my 40,000... Oh, I still have 64. Okay. I was going to say, I swept all my lumber. And they burned it all off already for ethanol. Holy crap. Yeah, I'm low on ethanol again. Oh, God. Come on. <laughs> Always low on the ethanol. Oh, they need me to mop up the... Uh... That's actually not bad. We got to mop up a little bit of the oil here. So that the uh, carbon dioxide comes up. We got to add some more CO2 to the top room. Oh, look at that.
all the CO2 gets to get pushed out. Good stuff, good stuff. Alright, so... Minus four, we're almost there. Needs to be a little bit warmer. And water is going to be coming from here, right? I guess it's fine. Auto bottle is on. Game performance looks better to me. Has there been a performance patch or upgrade to your PC? There was a performance patch. Uh, do you remember the Fast Friends uh, DLC? Who deletes P water? This guy doesn't know who I am. I've been constantly deleting water with a door setup. <laughs> I've actually been constantly doing that with both my brine and my polluted water that I'm getting from my petroleum gens. It's such a meme, dude. <laughs> I'm literally just... Yeah. Oh my god. You know, now that I'm looking at this, I didn't need the pump. I could have just moved the door set up to where the pump is. And that would have been fine. Oh, okay, so the last patch that came out was called Fast Friends. The last patch, Fast Friends, introduced a performance update. They did a lot of things like remove unnecessary animations from the game. And made it so that when you did call an animation, it didn't stay on the uh, active menu or something like that. So when your critters do animations, they have to pull an animation from a list. And I believe what used to happen was is that that animation would stay active on the list, even though it's not being animated or used or something like that. So they removed a lot of unnecessary things like that. And they made it so that the game is a little bit smoother. Performance update was big plus for the most part. But yeah, it is smoother. And there was a performance update. Not gonna lie, man. Gotta love the uh, constant updates with the Oni. Gotta have good devs, right? Yeah, there's also some new critters too. If you haven't seen it yet. There's the uh, Sandy Shell. That drops shellfish food. And there's an Oak Shell now. And there's also a new Pip. Uh, he died though. Feels bad. I would have showed it to you if I had it. But the new Pip's mad cute, dude. Look at this guy. It's pink. <laughs> pink and purple, dude. And they hug your dupes. That's the best part. <laughs> they actually just hug your dupes. It's so cool. Okay, I can actually mine the sound now. Cool, cool. Chlorine right there. Got the water. Alright, so we are at minus 1.6. That's fine. We have to be minus 2 for the water to freeze. Yep, at 0 degrees. Not worried about that. Alright, once we move all of this out and it fills up, man, I wouldn't have to add any more water. It's gonna be good. Oh man, I've not even learned a single thing about the new critters since the update that allows you to metamorph them or whatever it was. I have a YouTube video, Red Knight. I've been on the YouTubes for a while now. If you haven't checked it out and you want to see all the updates, we have a video for that going over the patch. I have a pre-patch and post-patch video. And then, uh, yeah, check it out. If you missed out on some of the things we've been doing, the VODs are there as well if you want to watch those. But if you didn't know, man, we got the YouTubes trying to run at full force. But yeah, a lot of the Oni content. The problem is, is that, you know, you said you're not big on Oni ever since. And I'm like, damn, feels bad. <laughs> feels bad, man. Because we got the Oni YouTube channel now. All right, all right. So we want to go to this planet and steal from the bees. The problem is, is that of the extreme cold, right? Extreme, extreme cold. There's a lot of hydrogen there as well. So, the problem with the extreme cold is I can't deal with the temperature. 
There's no liquid here that allows me to deal with it as well. Not only that, there's a crack in the abyssalite, allowing the heat to basically get sapped. Luckily for us, the gas is very unconductive in the area, so it's actually not going to be an issue. The problem is, though, is that if I do crack into it, I need to have a way to stop the gas from leaking out and freezing my lock. 